I lead a team of software engineers, and today I want to tell you about five things you can do in an interview that'll put you ahead of 95% of the competition. Now, if you're already interviewing at our company, we already know you can do everything your resume says you can do. You can code what we need you to code. You can do the work of the job. But what we want to know is, do we want to have you on our team? Not everybody who can code what you need them to code is a human being that you want to have on your team and talk to every day. Number one, do I enjoy talking with you? I'm about to potentially spend eight hours a day, every single day, having to talk with you, interact with you, work with you, and deal with you. That's more time than I get to spend with my family most days. Now, is that time spent interacting with you going to be fun and engaging, or is it gonna feel like a chore? Am I going to dread it every time? Do you communicate well? Are you engaging? Are you asking questions, or am I having to pull every word you say out of you? You just sit there twiddling your thumbs, waiting for other people to say something, answering questions in one or two word sentences, or not explaining them. You don't seem excited. Just overall, can we have a good, fun conversation where I think you're going to be a delight to have on my team? Just that alone puts you so far ahead of so many people. And number two, do you genuinely seem interested in working with us? You might not think that's something we should care about. You might just think, okay, I want money, you want programming, I can give you some programming and you can give me some money and we'll all be happy. That's kind of how I felt directly coming out of college too. Like, hey, look, I have these skills. These are the skills you want. I'm a very nice person, so just hire me. But now being on this side of things, I don't want somebody who's not excited to be a part of whatever it is we're doing. And even if your team isn't doing something super exciting, like you're coding web services or you're making a website, you know, you're not working at SpaceX, you're not going to Mars, but still you could, you could be excited about working with what you enjoy doing every day. You could seem interested in us as a team and us as people. When you're working with someone who just wants to punch a clock and collect a paycheck, you're not going to be nearly as productive as a group of people who are excited to be doing what they're doing and excited to be working together. And that's the kind of person I want on my team. Number three, if you've had a previous software development job, what was it? Can you explain it? And don't just talk about the technologies you use. Oh, I use Java and Spring and uh, we use Hibernate and I coded an Eclipse and we made um, a website, we made uh, a web service, um, I coded for uh, customers. Um, no, I, I want you to be able to explain what the thing that you worked on did, why it mattered, how it fit into the business that you were working with, the value that it provided. What that tells me is that that person can really think about the value that they're trying to provide for their company and not just taking a piece of work that they have to do and doing it blindly. I want them to be able to think about what they're doing and be able to deliver the value that we want to deliver and not always just blindly follow some directions you're given. And again, you might just think, uh, uh, who cares? Tell me what to code. I'll code the thing. It's my job to code stuff. You just tell me what to code and everybody will be happy. No. I want you engaged in the conversation of the needs that we're trying to deliver. Know what you've done, be able to explain it, and be excited about it too. Number four. If you've had a previous job, you've probably done code reviews at that job. What I want to know is how you do those code reviews. There's so many people that I know that just look at a pull request and go, hey, yeah, I mean, I guess it looks fine. Um, there's nothing that seems to be spelled wrong, or I guess it's fine, it's a pretty small change, or it's, it's such a huge change, and I don't care. That person's pretty good at coding, so they probably, it's probably right. It probably works how it's supposed to work. Now, please, if you're going to review code, review it. Pull the code down, run the test, boot up the application, test that the code actually does what it says it's supposed to do. Now, if you're somebody who pulls down the code, runs the test, boots up the application, and actually tests the functionality, you're doing more and you're doing better than, again, 95% of people doing code reviews and better than 95% of people who are interested in joining our team. It puts you way ahead of the curve. Number five, be able to communicate well in writing. And no, I don't mean handwriting, I mean emails. 
IMs. Unfortunately, this isn't really something that can jump out well in an interview. Most of the time, the person starts working for you and you realize you can't understand what they're saying in their emails or IMs. They aren't clear, they're always leaving things out, or you just don't understand really what they're trying to say. Or you see them in an email talking to a manager and you just know that manager is going to have no idea what they're trying to say and you're going to have to clear it up. So what I'm looking for is somebody who can be just as clean and articulate and descriptive in their written uh, communication as they are in their verbal communication. And so that's something I guess I might look at your resume for. So I mean, if there's a bunch of just misspellings and I can't quite make out what you're trying to say in some of these sentences, it's gonna make me go, man, I know this person is gonna be a chore to talk with over emails and IMs every day, and I'm just not gonna wanna do it. And that's a huge deal now with everybody working from home and the vast majority of communication that we do with each other is over IM or over email. I promise if you do those five things, as long as you're a halfway decent programmer, you're going to have teams just begging you to join them. Overall, what I think all of these can be condensed to is be a delightful person to work with. Nobody wants to work with a really great programmer who's just a jerk and impossible to get an answer from. We would much rather work with somebody who you can talk to, have some back and forth with, and just have a good time with while getting things done properly. Because you're able to have such good conversations and interact with these people well, you're going to get better solutions faster. I would much rather work with somebody whose programming skills are pretty good, but they're amazing to work with, great to talk to, than somebody who's a great programmer, but just really quiet, you can't get a word out of. And then when they do speak, it just doesn't make sense. They can't explain what they've done. Just no, it makes your face go like this. If you like this video, please be sure to not subscribe. We have all the subscribers we want. We're way too many already. If you dislike this video, be sure to leave like a super angry comment talking about how should I quit what I'm doing and go flip burgers. And thanks for watching.